Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name is Jacob and in this video, we are going to hook up with this deck of cards API right here inside of our bubble application and get some practice interacting with a real API. So if that sounds good, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. So in the last video, we started talking about APIs and we used the analogy of, of being at a restaurant, right? Of sitting down at a restaurant, looking at a menu that's in front of you and seeing on this menu what dishes you can order from the kitchen, right? The menu is a way of interfacing with that kitchen so that you can place an order and get what you want returned back to you. We're on deckofcardsapi.com right now, if you want to go there and follow along with this video. And what is what are we looking at? Well, this is API documentation, right? And I think that if we think about API documentation, similar to the way that we think of a menu at a restaurant, they work really well as, it works really well as an, an analogy, right? What are we looking at here? We're looking at different endpoints we learned a little bit at the end of last video about what an endpoint is. Remember, an endpoint is a digital location where we can make an API request. So we have a list of endpoints and an example response here, which we'll look at in a minute. But really, to go to use our analogy, every endpoint that we see, you can think of it almost as like an item on a menu that we could order. Right. If we make a request to this endpoint right here, we will receive a response that looks like this. Right. And typically when we're reading through API documentation, just like all restaurants are different, um, all API documentation is going to be different. Every uh, company has a different way of creating their documentation for other developers to read. Some documentation is really easy to read, um, just like some menus at restaurants are really easy to read. Uh, and some documentation is incredibly difficult and painful to read through. That's just the reality of, of dealing with APIs. But let's go through deck of cards here. We can see that one endpoint is shuffle the cards. And like we said, if we make a request to this endpoint right here, we can receive a response that will look something like this. So what are we looking at here? This looks maybe a little bit codey. Looks like a it looks like we're looking at code maybe, but it's not. We're just looking at a JSON object. This is JSON, right? And JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, it looks more intimidating than it is. It really is just a way of formatting data. Um, and when we're speaking about JSON, we're speaking about keys and values. So we have a, in this object right here, these curly brackets show us that we're dealing with an object here, right? Um, we have a key called success that has the value of true. We have a key called deck ID and the value of 3P40 and so on. We have a key of shuffled and a value of true right? Keys and values. Now, this is a relatively simple JSON object. Um, JSON objects can get quite complex in terms of the different nested levels that they have. But really, even in those more complex objects that we'll see in a second here, um, we're still dealing with keys and values. That's it. So if we make a request to this endpoint right here, we will receive a response that looks like this. I'm going to keep scrolling down the page here, and we see a different endpoint called draw a card. If we make a request to this endpoint right here, we can see what an example response looks like. Right? Now, this response is also a JSON object. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated, though, right? We still have a key called success and a value of true. Still have a key of deck ID with this value right here and remaining and so on. But we have this key of cards right here. And the value for cards is actually this list right here. In bubble language, we would call this a list as indicated by these square brackets at the top here, right? The, in, in more traditional programming, we would refer to this as an array. The value for cards here, this key of cards, is actually an array, a list of what? A list of objects, 
right? And each object in this list has its own keys and values, right? Conceptually, if we look at this, right, we have this key of cards, and this is an array of objects. We can think of each object as a card, right? A card is an object, and a card has an image associated with it, a value associated with it, a suit, and a code, right? So let's play with this idea for a little, a little moment here, and we're going to actually make a real request to this endpoint right here. Okay, so if we make a request here, we receive a response that looks like this. And if we read this, these, uh, this description right here, it says the count variable defines how many cards to draw from the deck. Be sure to replace deck ID with a valid deck ID. We use the deck ID as an identifier so we know who is playing with what deck. After two weeks, if no actions have been made on the deck, then we throw it away. Tip, replace deck ID with new to create a shuffled deck and draw cards from that deck in the same request. So it's referring to this, this part right here, this deck ID, right? Now, I've used this API many times before. You, we could, if we wanted to, if we were making an actual card game application um, that where we needed to actually keep the same deck every single time, then we might actually put a valid deck ID right here. In this case, just to get just to show you this example, we're going to take this tip and replace deck ID with new in order to create a shuffled deck in the same request. Okay. And then this count variable defines how many cards to draw from the deck here. Right now it's hard coded as, as two, we can see in this example. And if we look at the response, look at that, we have two cards or two objects returned to us. Okay. So Let's try to make this request inside of our bubble application. And if I look at the response here, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make this request, receive this response back. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to put two images on my page and show what this image is. If I just take this right here and copy this, we open a new tab, you can see that's what this image is right here, the King of Hearts, right? So let's try to make a request inside of our bubble application. Um, we'll receive this response back. And inside of a repeating group, what I'll do is I'll show two images of the cards that we receive back from this API. OK, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my bubble editor here. And we're going to install the API connector plugin. So if you haven't done that already, open up a new app that you can play around with inside of Bubble, uh, head over to the Plugins tab here and click on Add Plugin. And what we want, the one that we want to install is the API connector right over here. Once that is installed, what we're going to do is we're going to click on Expand to set up our first API. So the way that this works is we can set up different APIs, different API connections with different APIs. Um, we can add as many as we want. If we just click on add another API, we can add a new one down here. Um, and each one of these will be specific to the service that we're integrating with. So I'm going to delete the one that I just added. Let's scroll up top and I'm going to say that the name of this API will be deck of cards. That's the name of the service that we're interacting with. Now, authentication here we're going to leave as none or self-handled for now. Authentication is a big part of dealing with APIs. Um, we're going to talk more about that in, in future videos, but this particular API, this deck of cards API, doesn't require authentication. When we send an API request, we don't need to include any sort of information about who we are in order to receive a successful response. Most of the time, uh, you will need to send information about who you are. You will need to authenticate with the API that you're sending a request to. Um, it's also often the most the, the trickiest part about setting up API connections. We'll visit that in future sessions. For now, in future videos. For now, um, all that I want to do in this video is focus on just setting up a simple API connection, bringing data back into our Bubble app, and using that data inside of our application. So 
We'll leave this as none or self-handled. I'm going to expand this section right here. And what we're going to do here is we're, th this is where we set up our individual calls. So if I wanted to make a request to this endpoint right here, this endpoint, the we could say is called draw a card. I mean, we can call it whatever we want. It doesn't really matter to bubble. This is just for our reference. So I'm going to say draw cards will be the name of this request that I'm setting up. We're going to come back to use as in a minute here, or maybe in a future video. And we're going to leave this data type here as JSON. The, the data type, the, the data that we're receiving back from this API is going to be in JSON format. These right here, you should recognize as our restful verbs that we spoke about in the last video. In this case, what kind of request are we making? We're making a get request. We're receiving information back from this deck of cards API. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it actually like explicitly says that here. Most API documentation will show you what type of request you're making, whether that's a get, post, put, patch, or delete, um, beside the endpoint. In this case, we're making a get request. If, you, if you're thinking, well, how would I know that? Um, a lot of what you do with APIs, I mean, in this case, I know that because I've used this API before. Um, I think the first time I was using this, I just assumed that it just because of the nature of the request I was making, uh, that I was going to be making a get request. And if you didn't know that, you can just try a get request, see if it works, try a post request. In this case, it makes sense because we're, we're getting information back. And like I said, um, most of the time with most API documentation, it'll actually say make a get request or a post request or whatever that is. So we're going to make a get request. I'll leave this as get. And right here, this input is for the actual endpoint that we're going to make a get request to. I'm going to go back to the documentation. Remember that we said this is the endpoint right here. So I'm going to click copy. and as the deck of cards documentation suggests, I'm going to replace deck ID right here. I'm going to replace that with new because we don't really care about keeping the same deck uh, for future use. So let's paste that endpoint here and let's replace deck ID with new. We'll leave count equal to two right now so that we get two cards back. And all I'm going to do now is hit initialize call. Now, this is really important. Initialize call, what does that do? When we hit initialize call, Bubble will actually try to send a request to this endpoint right here. If we had added any parameters or headers inside of our request, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a, in a little bit. But it would take whatever kind of call we have set up here and actually try to make the request. So watch when I hit initialize call, you can see that we receive, well, this window appears right here. Generally speaking, if you see this window after you've initialized your call inside of the API connector, um, you should breathe a sigh of relief, maybe most of the time, not always, because it usually means that Bubble has made the call successfully and we're, we're actually receiving data back, right? If I scroll to the bottom here and I click on show raw data, we can actually see this JSON object that was returned to us, right? There is success, deck ID, and here is our list of cards. It looks like these cards that we're getting back, each object here, it looks like the documentation for deck of cards is a little bit outdated and they're actually returning um, like this images key right here is actually an object. We have different options, an SVG and a PNG for this image file, right? Which is pretty cool. Um, but there we go. We've made a request. We've received a response. And if I click on save, then Bubble will take this as me saying, yes, this is exactly the response you can expect to receive. And Bubble will know how to map this response out. And this is really important. This is why we initialize a call. It's so that Bubble can make a request, receive a response, and understand how to map out that data that is returned to us so that we can use that data inside of our interface. So we're going to come back here in a moment to look at this one more time. But 
everything looks good so far. We're going to click on save and let's keep moving on. So now that we've set this up, now that we've initialized the call and Bubble knows what type of data to expect back from this endpoint, let's head over to the design tab and actually start using this data that we're going to receive from deck of cards inside of our application here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a repeating group. I'm going to put it on the page here. Uh, let's just say for now that this will be one row with two columns. And what we'll do is let's um, center this. Inside of this repeating group, we'll keep this really simple. I'm just going to put two images or I mean, a repeating group shows a list of things. So I'm just going to put one image inside of a repeating group. By the way, I'm assuming no knowledge of APIs whatsoever in this video series, but I am assuming a little bit that you know, for example, what a repeating group is in Bubble um, and a, a few other kind of fundamental Bubble things. So if, if, you, if you don't know what a repeating group is, if you don't know what I'm doing, um, I would recommend stopping this video here, um, going and learning some of the fundamentals uh, what is a repeating group and all of all of that stuff, and then coming back to this video to continue. Anyways, we're going to put an image element inside of the first cell here, and let's go to this repeating group and deal with the type of content here. So for the type of content, we have two options here. Uh, the one that I want to start with is going to be, if we scroll down here, notice how we have these two options available to us. We have draw card and we have a draw cards card. Okay, I'm gonna set this to draw cards card right now and we're gonna talk about this in a second. Okay, so a draw cards card. What is a draw cards card? If we go back to our plugin here and we look at, let's reinitialize this call. And we look at the data one more time. First of all, what have we what have we called this API call? We've called it draw cards, right? That's the name that we gave it here. And because we've initialized that call, Bubble recognizes this draw cards here, right? So draw cards refers to the actual name of this API call that we've set up right here. But what is this card here? This card is actually referring to, whoops, let's go back to plugins here. This card is actually referring to this key right here, right? And what it's act, what the card is, is one of these objects right here. Remember, we can think of this conceptually, right? This cards, this cards key returns a list of objects to us. And each one of those objects we can think of as a single card, right? So be, again, the only reason that those two options exist for us inside of the design tab right here as the type of content that we can choose is because we've initialized that call and because Bubble knows what type of data it's going to receive back. So because I've set the type of content here to draw cards card, remember when we set the type of content for a repeating group, what are we saying? We're saying that each cell in this repeating group is going to hold one of these things. In this case, each cell is going to hold data for a single card that's returned to us. Okay, now the data source, where are we going to get these cards from? Obviously, we're going to get these cards from Deck of Cards API, right? So how are we, how are we going to do that? We can say get data from an external API. And the API provider that we want to get data from here is right down here, this API that we've set up, deck of cards, draw cards. So I'm going to click on that. And look at that, right? Deck of cards, draw cards. What do we see here? We see success, deck ID, cards, and remaining. These should look familiar, right? Where are these coming from? These are coming from the response that we're receiving, right? Success, cards, deck ID, 
and remaining. And hopefully, if you played a little, played around a little bit with data inside of your database, hopefully some alarm bells are going off here. And you're thinking, hey, this looks very similar to what I see when I'm trying to show data from my database here, right? These look like fields of a data type. And they it functions when we're dealing with APIs, it, it, it is the exact same thing that we're dealing with here in terms of how the, the syntax that we use, that the, the way that we that Bubble wants us to deal with it. That's why we actually initialize the call so that Bubble knows how to map out this data and it presents us with these fields here from this response, right? So I'm going to say that we, we've already said the type of content is draw cards card. And I'm going to say for the data source, we're going to get data from an external API. That API is going to be the deck of cards that particular call is going to be draw cards. And we're going to take that cards key or field, whatever we want to call it, that is returned to us as our data source. And notice how if I click that, we get this nice blue expression from Bubble, which tells us that we're being consistent with the type of content and the data source here. Okay. Now, another cool part of this, if I go then go to the image, remember every repeating group, the first cell of this repeating group is going to, in this case, hold a single card. So every element inside of this cell will have access to that cell's card. I want this image to be dynamic. So I'm going to say, that the data source for this image, we insert dynamic data. The data source for this image will be the current cells draw cards card. And look at that. What are these? These are fields associated with this card, right? Let's go back to our plugins. Instead of initializing the call again, let's just click on manually enter API response and we can see what this response looks like here. We have one card here, an example of a card. And look at that, a card will have a code, an image, images, value, and a suit, right? And that's what we're looking at right over here. Inside these, that's what these options are, right? So I'm gonna say the dynamic image, the data source will be the current cells, draw cards, card, image, and there we go. Let's center this inside of the cell. Let's preview this. And what's going to happen here, right now you can't see, but I'm getting asked to put in a username and a password because this app is password protected. What's happening is the page is loading. We're, as soon as the page is loaded, because that repeating group, that data source for that repeating group relies on an API call being made, Bubble's actually making that request, receiving a response. And if I refresh the page, look at that, we're getting new cards every single time which is pretty cool, right? So we are making our request, receiving a response, using that response inside of a repeating group and showing these images of a four and a queen on the page. Let's look at one more way that we could, um, we could do this and achieve the same results. If I go to the repeating group here and I say that the type of content is going to be uh, instead of a draw cards card, if I say that it's going to be an image, let's just clear this and we'll start from scratch here. The type of content of the repeating group is an image, meaning that every single cell here is going to hold a image, right? Now the data source, we still in this case want to get data from an external API, that API of course being deck of cards. So we're gonna say, get data from an external API the API provider will be deck of cards, draw cards. And right here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, dive a little bit into this nested response that we get, right? So if I say deck of cards, draw cards, cards, I'm going to go into each item's image right here, right? And that will basically take us to the same place. We're just using a different expression to get there. But if I refresh the page, Actually, this we, we still have to go and set the data source for the image, which is why we're not seeing them right here. So let's go back here and we'll say that this 
the dynamic image here that we want to load is just going to be the current cells image, right? Because we've set the type of content to be an image. So all I'm going to do is refresh the page. And there we go. We have two cards being returned to us every time the page loads. Okay. So I hope you found that first lesson valuable. We'll make this, um, this API call that we're making a little bit more complex in the next video. Um, but I hope you understand the fundamentals of uh, JSON, of making an API request to an endpoint, receiving a response, of how we can initialize that call inside of the API connector so that Bubble knows how to map out that response that we're receiving from an API. And then, of course, using that data in whatever way we want to start using it, we'll, we'll build on that a little bit as we progress through the course. But using that data inside of our application, like we are here in this case, to show two images that were returned to us uh, from this deck of cards API. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.